and we will finish section 1.3 and then hopefully section 1.4. So 1.3 just had a little material left, although some of it's pretty important. Um, give me a moment while I get rid of a thing that popped up on the screen. Um, we can visualize vectors and in practice, this visualization only works for small vectors, two elements or maybe three elements. But there's still some sort of important takeaway messages from, from the idea. And let's, uh, let's look at a vector. In R2. So a vector with two elements. I mean, I say we can visualize this, and you can maybe sort of see how a vector in R2 is just a list of two numbers in order. In this case, the numbers one and three. And we already have a way of visualizing lists of numbers, and that's graphing them on the Cartesian plane. So in R2, we can graph vectors basically the way we graph points. But there's a bit of a difference, though. We don't just put the point on the Cartesian plane. Instead, we draw an arrow connecting the origin to the point. And that's the vector. And when you draw a vector like this, a few things become evident. First of all, vectors have direction. We've drawn this vector as an arrow. This arrow is pointing somewhere. Um, second of all, a vector has a length because we're drawing this vector as a line segment on the Cartesian plane and line segments have lengths. So often when people are talking about the difference between vectors and numbers, that first thing is what they'll sort of horn in on. What makes a vector a vector is that it has a direction. Because, you, I mean, you can think of numbers as having lengths. You can think, if this is the number line, and here is 0, 1, and 2, and you have the number 2, You can think of two as having that length. Um, in fact, that's one way you can try to introduce numbers to little kids. You can't really think of it as having a direction. Um, so this is true even in, um, I mean, you can imagine a three-dimensional graph. So you can imagine this concept sort of extending very naturally to R3. You can't graph in R4 or later, but vectors with large numbers of elements do still have directions and they do still have length. And we'll work with those concepts 
throughout the course. Um, this visual representation of a vector also makes it um, maybe easier to understand what scale their multiplication is doing and why it's called scalar. If we, let's see, we haven't left ourselves much room to work with. Let's go to a new coordinate system and let's uh, one, two, three, one, two. And let's look at the vector three, one. And drawing straight lines on this whiteboard is my kryptonite, but the vector three, one, oh, that's not so bad. The vector three, one is the drawn as the point three, one connected to the origin via an arrow. We can do scale their multiplication. We've already seen that as a concept. For example, we could take two times V and that would multiply the three by two and the one by two and get us six two. And what does this do? Well, the answer is that multiplying this vector by two keeps its direction the same, but it doubles the length. So we're still, again, I know it doesn't totally look that way because my artistic limitations, but the old vector and the new vector are pointing in the same direction. It's just that the new vector is twice as long as the old vector. And now you hear the word scalar. Well, something scale is its size, its length. So it's called scalar multiplication because it's keeping the direction of the vector but changing its scale. It's either making it longer or shorter. Um, it would make it shorter if we had like one half V. One half V would keep the direction, but have the length. Um, the only sort of exception to this um, happens when you have negative scalars. So like if you have a negative two instead of a positive two. A negative scalar perfectly reverses the direction. So negative 2v might look something like that. It's, um, it's, it's doing the scale thing, first of all, so it becomes twice as long, but then we turn around and go in the opposite direction of the original vector. And, I mean, this understanding of scale or multiplication is useful and important. You really ought to know what scale their multiplication is doing. Um, you sometimes see addition presented um, graphically. That's maybe a little less helpful, but we can still do it. So let's say we have this vector, and that vector. 
and we want to add them and get a new vector. Well, geometrically, addition is just moving vectors around. And that's, that's true on the number line as well. I mean, again, when you're first presenting, like, young children addition, one way we do that is, well, here's... One, two, three on the number line. And here's two on the number line. And if you want to represent three plus two, you can think of three as being this line segment, you know, you tell the child, you know, imagine we have a three foot length of ribbon and we have a two foot length of ribbon and we want to take these lengths of ribbon and we want to put them together. Now, this second piece of ribbon can, I should have used different colors. The second piece of ribbon, we can take it and we can move it to the end of the first piece of ribbon. And um, we can see on the number line that putting these pieces of ribbon together gives us three plus two equals five feet of ribbon. It's, it's precisely the same thing here. Um, we can take, we can think of addition as we've got this uh, quantity, this arrow, and we've got this arrow, and we'll take one of these arrows. Let's take this smaller one. and move it so that it's, we say, tip to tail, so that it begins where the first arrow ends, and where that second arrow winds up now defines the sum. So if this is U and this is V, This new vector is u plus v. So we sometimes say that addition is just moving vectors tip to tail. This is called the parallelogram law, or and um, the reason it's called that is you know when you add, order doesn't matter. Right? Going back to our ribbon example, we could just as easily have taken this piece of red ribbon and moved it down there, and we'd get the same thing. We'd get 2 plus 3 instead of 3 plus 5, but the result is we get 2 plus 3 instead of 3 plus 2, but the result is still 5. If instead of moving the green vector, you moved the red vector, you'd get this picture, and you'd wind up at the same point, and parallelogram rule, or parallelogram principle, if you like, uh, alliteration comes from the fact that if you show both of those um, processes on the same Cartesian plane, you wind up with a parallelogram. Uh, as I say, not super used super often in practice, but you should know, I mean, just on a general level, what's addition doing? And I do think this helps with uh, that.
because, okay, that's, that's it for graphing, at least for now. Let me just make the observation that because uh, we have addition and scalar multiplication and equality, we can create um, equations involving vectors like x times 1, 2, 3 plus y times 0, 0, 1 plus z times 1, 0, 1 equals 4, 3, 2. Just uh, making something up at random here. And on the left, we have three vectors, but we can combine those. I mean, we can do vector addition and turn multiple vectors into a single vector. And we can do scalar multiplication. And if on the left, we did all the scalar multiplication and we did all the addition, we'd get 1x plus 0y plus 1z, 2x plus 0y plus 0z, 3x plus 1y plus 1z. And on the right we have 4, 3, 2. And if we wanted to solve that, we already know how to solve it. We don't need to learn a new technique for solving vector equations. And the reason I say we know how to solve it is that two vectors are equal if all of their components are equal. If their first, second, and third components are equal. So for these vectors to be the same, those first components need to be equal. Those second components need to be equal. Those third components need to be equal. And we've got a system of linear equations that we can solve using Gauss-Jordan elimination. And, I mean, obviously, that there is nothing special about these vectors I made up off the top of my head that caused this to work. In general, a vector equation would look like an unknown plus a vector um, times a vector plus another unknown times a vector and so on. Maybe you, you have thousands of vectors and thousands of unknowns, and all of this equals some vector. And to solve this, you create a matrix that has these vectors, as its columns, and it's an augmented matrix with that last vector being the right-hand column, and then you perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on it. So, let's go ahead and solve this vector equation. Again, at some point, I'll probably just 
stop saying this and we can take it as read. I nor I've never bothered to delete vectors out of our calculator. I'll just keep writing over the vectors that we have. So let's see. So these vectors are becoming columns of my matrix. One, two, three. Our calculator is going to fight us because when we press enter, it's going to go to the right. And I want to enter these entries as vectors. One, two, three. There you go. Pressing the up or the down button is the same as pressing the enter key. There's our first vector, zero, zero, one. One is zero, one. Four, three, two. This last vector becomes the augmented column. Four, three, two. And we get out of here. You'd think there would be a way to just go back to the menu, but there isn't. Now we have to go back into the menu, select reduced row echelon form. We get kicked out again. Go back into the menu. Huh. Very nice numbers for a matrix for a vector equation that I came up with on the top of my head. So 1.5, negative 5, 2.5. One point five negative five two point five. And this is going to be true in the um, in the next section as well. We'll introduce a new type of equation, and then we'll see that solving it is just done using Gauss-Jordan elimination. And this is why, I mean, I, I've mentioned that Gauss-Jordan elimination is used through pretty much all of this uh, of this class. It's because it's not just for systems of linear equations. It's also for vector equations. And it's also for matrix equations. And having used that phrase, we'll start the next section. Maybe section 1.5 because we skip a section.